Hi everyone, welcome to Friday Fun. Today we're gonna to talk about weather. And this is the month of March. And March is a great time to talk about weather because it seems to be always changing. March is the beginning of spring. And spring is in between the winter and then after spring is the summer. So sometimes in March it feels like winter and sometimes in March it feels like summer and sometimes all different things in between. Yesterday and last night was so windy, we came out and look what we found. We found branches from this tree all over the ground. There will definitely be some cleaning up to do. They broke in the wind. Here we are in the classroom and we're gonna talk about clouds. But before I actually talk about what they look like, I'm gonna talk about what they're made of. They're made of water vapor. Itsy bitsy droplets of water in the, in the air that we can't even see. But we can make water vapor out of our own bodies just by breathing. Let me show you. Here's my magnifying glass. <sighs> Let me try it again. <sighs> and you can see there's some water vapor that has come out of my mouth. Now water vapor usually comes from the ocean or a lake or a river or even a small puddle on the sidewalk. And you'll know if you see a little puddle on the sidewalk and it's a sunny day and you come back a while later, the puddle's completely gone. That water has evaporated into the air and is rising. When it rises, that water vapor goes up in the air and way high in the sky, higher you know, than the mountains, the, the air begins to get colder and colder. So as that warm water vapor gets colder and colder, it forms clouds. Here's a picture that I have of some different kind of clouds. So there's some that are very low and close to the ground, some sort of in the middle, See, they're just as high as an airplane and some that are super high. And the ones that are really high are made of ice crystals. And this great big thing over here, these are some puffy clouds that go up really high. And this is called a thunderhead. And when you get clouds that go this high, lightning, thunder, and hail, because it's so cold up this high in the sky, that water crystal or brighter, they all get together and they make hail and fall to the ground. And we had hail this week too, not here, but in the nearby areas, there was hail. So now we're gonna talk about some different looking clouds. So if the ground is down here, my table, and this is the sky, sometimes we have clouds that are right on the ground. You're walking right through a cloud and that's called fog. So fog is like a, just a cloud that landed on the ground all the way across. You can walk right through it, but sometimes it's very difficult to see and it's not safe when you're driving and things. So that's fog. But usually we have clouds that are a little bit higher. And sometimes we have clouds on a day we call overcast. And overcast is when the clouds might be a little heavy, kind of are very thick and they make a layer all the way across the sky, but usually not all the way onto the ground. So if we're gonna have an overcast day, it's gonna be a thick layer of clouds all the way across. And usually it's one pretty straight line on the bottom. They kind of stretch out to make nice long thickness of clouds and maybe it's a band of clouds maybe it's like this all the way across and they're pretty low and they keep the sun out so those days we call overcast when we don't see the sun we know it's up there but it's blocked by the clouds and then other times we have clouds that are more puffy and the puffy ones are just a little bit higher. And sometimes the puffy ones are sort of all by themselves and other times they hook together to make a bigger puffy cloud. Now all clouds are moved by wind. So if the wind is blowing, 
the clouds will move across the sky. So we had some puffy clouds like this on Monday. And in some places, they even had thunderheads and hail. It was some crazy wild weather. And as we get higher in the sky, so we have the, could be a foggy day where the clouds are on the ground, or it could be an overcast day where there's a layer of them blocking the sun. Or we could have some high clouds, just puffy cumulus clouds. And so far, all my clouds have been white. And when you have white clouds, then you're not expecting any rain. We know what color they have to be when you're going to get some rain. They turn darker, sometimes really dark gray. So as we get higher in the sky, some clouds started out like these puffy ones, but really thinned out, stretched out. So they're still a little bit like the puffy ones, but they're a little more open. And sometimes they can make layers like this. And then as we get even higher, we get into clouds that look like little wispies. Very, very thin. Very, very spread out. And these are the ones that are made of ice crystals. And the ones way up in the sky, we call them cirrus clouds. So we can have fog, we can have overcast, we can have puffy cumulus clouds, we can have cumulus clouds that are starting to break up, and little feathery cirrus clouds on top. And it's fun to look at clouds. And when we look at clouds, what's really fun is to see what kind of shapes they have. So I'm looking at this right here, and this cloud has an interesting shape. It sort of looks like a teapot to me. Maybe if it had a, a handle, now it looks like a teapot, doesn't it? So when we look up at the sky and we see clouds, we can use our imagination and see what they look like. And also what's fun is the wind continues to blow and they're changing. So it might look like a teapot, teapot for a moment or two and then continue to change. And this will get longer and this will change or something like that. It may look something totally different. What does that look like now? Hmm. Miss Susan says it looks like a fish. Yeah, that could be the backside and the fish could be eating something on this side. Here's the food. Our story for today is a really silly story. It's called Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. That does sound silly. We were all sitting around the kit big kitchen table. It was Saturday morning, pancake morning. Mom was squeezing oranges for juice. Henry and I were betting on how many pancakes we each could eat. And Grandpa was doing the flipping. See, he's doing the cooking. Seconds later, something flew through the air and headed toward the kitchen ceiling and landed right on Henry. After we realized that the flying object was only a pancake, we all laughed. Even Grandpa breakfast continued quite uneventfully. All the other pancakes landed in the pan and all of them were eaten, even the one that landed on Henry. That night, touched off by the pancake incident at breakfast, Grandpa told us the best tall tale bedtime story he'd ever told. Across an ocean, over lots of huge bumpy mountains, across three hot deserts and one smaller ocean, there lay the tiny town of Chew and Swallow. In most ways, it was very much like any other tiny town. It had a main street lined with stores, houses with trees and gardens around them, a schoolhouse, about 300 people, and some assorted cats and dogs. But there were no food stores in the town of Chew and Swallow. They didn't need any. The sky supplied all the food they could possibly want. The only thing that was really different about Chew and Swallow was its weather. It came three times a day at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Everything that everyone ate came from the sky.
Whatever the weather served, that was what they had to eat. But it never rained rain. It never snowed snow. It never blew just wind. It rained things like soup and juice. And it snowed mashed potatoes and green peas. And sometimes the wind blew in storms of hamburgers. The people could watch the weather report on television in the morning, and they would even hear a prediction for the next day's food. When the townspeople went outside, they carried their plates, cups, glasses, forks, spoons, knives, and napkins with them. That way they would always be prepared for any kind of weather. If there were leftovers, and there usually were, people took them home and put them in their refrigerators in case they got hungry between meals. The menu varied. By the time they woke up in the morning, breakfast was coming down. After a brief shower of orange juice, low clouds of sunny side up eggs moved in, followed by pieces of toast, butter and jelly sprinkled down on for the toast, and most of the time it rained milk afterwards. For lunch one day, frankfurters, already in their rolls, blew from the northeast at about five miles an hour. There were mustard clouds nearby. Then the wind shifted to the east and brought in baked beans. A drizzle of soda finished off the meal. Dinner one night consisted of lamb chops becoming heavy at times with occasional ketchup. Periods of peas and baked potatoes were followed by a gradual clearing with a wonderful jello setting in the west. The sanitation department of Chew and Swallow had a rather unusual job for a sanitation department. It had to remove the food that fell on the houses and the sidewalks and the lawns. The workers cleaned things up after every meal and fed all the dogs and cats. Then, they emptied some of it into the surrounding oceans for the fish and turtles and whales to eat. The rest of the food was put back into the earth so that the soil would be richer for the people's flower gardens. Life for the town people was delicious until the weather took a turn for the worse. One day, there was nothing but gorgonzola cheese all day long. That kind of cheese is pretty stinky. The next day, there was only broccoli, and it was all overcooked. And the next day, there were Brussels sprouts and peanut butter with mayonnaise. That doesn't sound good. Another day, there was a pea soup fog. No one could see where they were going, and they could barely find the rest of their meal that got stuck in that fog. The food was getting larger and larger, and so were the portions. People were getting frightened. Violent storms blew up frequently. Awful things were happening. One Tuesday, there was a hurricane of bread and rolls all day long and into the night. There were soft rolls, hard rolls, some with seeds, some without. There was white bread, rye, and whole wheat toast. Most of it was larger than they'd ever seen bread and rolls before. It was a terrible day. Everyone had to stay indoors. Roofs were damaged, and the sanitation department was beside itself. The mess took workers four days to clean up, and the sea was filled with floating rolls. To help out, the people piled up as much bread as they could in their backyards. The birds pecked at it a bit, but it just stayed there and got staler and staler. There was a storm of pancakes one morning and the downpour of maple syrup ne that nearly flooded the town. A huge pancake covered the school. No one could get it off because of its weight, so they had to close the school. That's a big pancake. Lunch one day brought 15-inch drifts of cream cheese and jelly sandwiches. Everyone ate themselves sick, and the day ended with a stomach ache. There was an 
awful salt and pepper wind accompanied by an even worse tomato tornado. People were sneezing themselves silly and running to avoid the tomatoes. The town was a mess. There were seeds and pulp everywhere. The sanitation department gave up. Their job was too big. Everyone feared for their lives. They couldn't go outside most of the time. Many houses had been badly damaged by the giant meatballs. Stores were boarded up, and there was no more school for the children. So a decision was made to abandon the town of Chew and Swallow. It was a matter of survival. The people glued together the giant pieces of stale bread, sandwich style with peanut butter, took the absolute necessities with them, and set sail on their rafts for a new land. After be- being afloat for a week, they finally reached a small coastal town which welcomed them. The bread held up surprisingly well, well enough for them to build temporary homes for themselves out of it. The children began school again, and the adults all tried to find the places for themselves in the new land. The biggest change they had to make was getting used to buying food at the supermarket. They found it odd that food was kept on shelves and packaged in boxes and cans and bottles, meat that had to be cooked was kept in the large refrigerator. Nothing came from the sky except rain and snow. The clouds above their heads were not made of fried eggs. No one ever got hit by a hamburger again, and nobody dared go back to chew and swallow to find out what had happened to it. They were too afraid. Henry and I were awake until the very end of Grandpa's story. I remember his goodnight kiss. The next morning, we woke up to see snow falling outside our window. We ran downstairs for breakfast and ate it a little faster than usual so we could go sledding with Grandpa. It's funny, but even as we were sledding down the hill, we thought we saw a giant pad of butter at the top and we could almost smell the mashed potatoes. See, it looks kind of like mashed potatoes with butter on top. That's a fun story. So now we're going to go outside and we're going to look for some clouds. If you look over the fence and up above the hill, you can see some clouds. And those are low to the ground, aren't they? Those wispy clouds up there, those are made of ice crystals. They're really, really high in the sky. Look at these great clouds. These are sort of the cumulus clouds going a bit higher and coming apart. They're beautiful. Let's see, what do you think it looks like? I think that this one kind of looks like a bird beak at the end. Maybe it could be a hummingbird flying by. What do you think? There's even a little eye on it. And then if we look at the other ones, let's see if we can see any other shapes. Do you see anything that looks... Oh, this one. I like this low one. That kind of looks like the big mouth of a dragon. What do you think? Do you see a little dry, a big mouth of a dragon? That's pretty cool. We can spend a lot of time looking at clouds and trying to figure out what they look like. And you can make up whatever you think it looks like. Clouds are super interesting. We walked out to the preserve and we wanted to show you the um, weather station. The pole behind me, behind the chain link fence, is our Madrona Marsh weather station. And up on the top is an anemometer. It measures the wind speed and the direction of the wind. And you can see we have just a little breeze going right now. Down the pole a little further, there's that black box, kind of a roundish box. And inside there, there's a rain gauge to tell us how much rain falls. There's a temperature gauge to tell us what the temperature is. There's another thing that tells us how intense the sun is and how quickly you can get sunburn. And other things that can tell you how much water vapor is in the air and how much air pressure we have. 
And all of that is taken and sent into the internet. And if you go to the Madrono Marsh website, there's a little green tab. It says Madrona Weather Station. And you press that and you can find out what the weather is here at the marsh. And it's only about a three minute delay. So it's really right on time. And looking behind me up in the sky, remember the dragon? It looks now like the dragon ate the hummingbird because the hummingbird's gone. <laughs> it's fun to look at the clouds. You can make anything you want. Also, there's some lines in the sky. Do you see those lines? Those are kind of like clouds. They're condensation trails made by airplanes. Airplanes have hot engines and they make steam coming out and then the steam gets frozen because it's so high so it makes it like a cloud that's like a line that's pretty interesting you can see those all the time today we have a beautiful sunny day and when you have a beautiful sunny day you have shadows and some of the trees can make some very interesting shadows on the ground you can see my shadow see my hands there's my shadow. And also very interesting is you can see the reflection on the water. Just like when you look in a mirror, you look carefully on the water, you can see the branches of the trees. You can see their reflection on the water. If it's a cloudy day, there won't be any reflection. It's beautiful. We walked over to the other side of the marsh where there's a lot of water right behind me. And I wanted to show you some more things about the weather. I brought a real fun tool. This is a, a temperature gun and it can tell you the temperature by pointing at things. So I'm gonna point at some things that are in the sun and they're gonna be warmer if they're in the sun and some things that are in the shade and we're gonna check it out. So I'm gonna walk over to this tree and this is the back side of the tree in the shade. And if you look right here, pointing there and it says 58 degrees now and you see that little red dot that little red dot tells you what it's taking the temperature of and as soon as my finger gets in there it gets warmer doesn't it and my finger was, is more warm than the tree so now we're going to go over to a sunnier spot and see if it's warmer a little sun right here and it says 78, 80 degrees at 82, 81. That's a lot more. Do you remember what it was in the cold? So this one is 80, 81, it changes a little bit. Now let's go back to the shady one. So 80 is much bigger than 62 or 60, isn't it? That's a big difference. Just between the shade and the sun on the same kind of material. Now we're gonna try the ground. Now I'll find a sunny spot in the ground and the ground here is wet. Here on the ground, I'll show my little gun, it's a 77 or 78. Now we're gonna walk over where the ground is dry and see if it's different. And we're gonna put our little gun here. I'll try to get out of my own shadow. And it says 82. So it's just a little bit warmer where the ground is dry. That's because the land heats up faster than the water. Let's check the water. So we have 82 on the ground. Now we're gonna try the water. And the water is saying 67. That's a lot less than 82. So water takes a lot longer to warm up. So it stays colder. Just like when you're at the beach and you're on the sand, the sand and the sun feels nice and warm, but then you get to the surf and the water, oh, it's very cold. So the land heats up faster than the water. We've come into the exhibit hall, our little museum, to demonstrate a very interesting thing about weather. So the sun shines from the sky and it warms up the ground. And as the ground warms, the air on the ground gets warmer and warm air always rises. And that creates a lot of things in weather. Now, I wanna demonstrate how that warm air rises. 
Now what I have here, this is called a heat gun. This is a tool from my garage and it gets very, very hot and it doesn't work like a, like a hair dryer because it doesn't blow very much. It just mostly puts out hot air. So we're going to fill my little parachute with some hot air and see how it rises. So I have to be very careful because this is a tool. Get the hot air going and I'm going to fill up my my little parachute and make it really hot inside. We're going to see if it'll go up. And there it goes. <laughs> that's pretty fun. Hot air always rises. And that's so important because the air that's going up is warmer. And as it gets higher and higher, it gets cooler and cooler. Then it forms clouds. So I hope you enjoyed our lesson on weather and clouds today. We had so many different kinds of weather this week. Who knows what it's going to be like tomorrow. Hopefully, we'll have some more fun weather and you can go outside and look at some clouds. We got to see the weather station and we got to see some clouds and we got to see the reflection on the water, which was beautiful. And I'm going to show you a picture of a rainbow. This happened in my neighborhood. Thanks for joining us for Friday Fun. Bye.